Hi everyone, welcome back to the Nicole and Richie channel. Today's video is all the nitty gritty about labor, delivery, postpartum, the things people don't wanna talk about, the things people don't tell you that you should know before you have a baby or before your partner has a baby. I think this topic is really, really important because people just aren't talking about this stuff enough. It's good to have realistic expectations of what's gonna happen when you're in labor and then postpartum so that you're not as shocked. There's already so many changes going on as it is, but if you go into the situation knowing what to expect, then I think the transition's a little bit easier for both mom and dad. Um, also think this information is really good for dads to know so that when you're in the delivery room, you know what the heck's happening. I know there's a lot of parents out there who watch our videos with their kids Kids, but I do want to say this video is not for kids at all. This video is for a more mature audience. I'm going to be talking about actual birth all the way to like postpartum depression and sex. Also keep in mind I am not a professional. I am just a mom who's had her own personal experience. I have done research on some of these topics so I know a little bit of information and I'm happy to share with you what I know but I am not an expert by any means. I'm going to jump in and try to get across each point as quickly as possible. Also this video is sponsored by Kindred Bravely. I'm gonna be talking about them a little bit later in the video, so stay tuned for that. So let's jump right in. So first I wanna start off with the labor and delivery process. A lot of the things I'll be talking about is specific to vaginal as opposed to C-section because that's what my experience was and I don't really have a lot of information on C-section. But first of all, contractions. So this is one of the first things you'll start to experience when you're going into labor. Contractions can be very animalistic. And what I mean by that is all women are gonna handle contractions differently. They might be like doubled over in pain. They might be squatting because that's what's most comfortable for them. They might be screaming their head off. It can be scary like as a partner to watch your spouse going through contractions because they look like they're in so much pain. But this is just what women are doing to try to get through contractions as smoothly as possible. Another note on contractions because everyone kind of describes how contractions feel differently. For me, it felt like really, really bad, serious diarrhea pain. Um, kind of like a shooting pain going up your area. For other people, they feel it more in their back, but basically contractions are just squeezing of the uterus. You feel it getting really, really tight, tightening up, and then once the contraction's done, it's like a release. I think the most important thing with contractions is to learn how to breathe through them. Also, communicate with your partner of how you want them to support you through the process. So if you want them to like shut up and just squeeze your hand and not say anything, tell them that. If you want them to not even look at you, tell them that. Like they need to know how they can best support you as well. So once you are ready to give birth, and the baby is ready to come out and wants to come out, you go into something called pushing contractions. And this is when you basically feel like you have to poop. The doctor literally asked me, oh, do you feel like you have to poop? And I was like, yeah. They're like, okay, it's time to push this baby out. You know, I put my legs up on the stirrups and they said, you're going to push as if you are trying to poo. The very popular question that I get, do people poo or pee during labor? Yes that might happen. You might poop during labor. You might pee during labor. Make sure anyone in the room that is your family or partner knows that so that if they don't want to see that, they are not on the other side of you watching that happen. Especially if you have the epidural, you don't feel anything going on down there because you're numb to it. So truly, you have no idea what's going on on the other side of your legs. You're just like, I'm trying to get this baby out. And it's totally normal. You shouldn't be embarrassed about it. The doctors deal with that stuff all the time. It's really not a big deal. In terms of my experience when Jace came out, I did feel his head go through and like come out and then I gave like one more final big push and I felt his body grow through so I was able to still feel him actually being born. Um, I wasn't completely numb to that so that was a cool experience and then after your baby's born they take the baby put them directly on your chest typically and then you get to see them for the first time which is so special. Richie also got to cut the umbilical cord right when the baby came out. After you give birth the placenta still needs to come out that sometimes happens like a few minutes after or up to 30 minutes after but the doctor is still there basically waiting for that. I personally did not feel anything. I was so busy just like falling in love with Jace in that moment that I was not paying attention to the placenta coming out. I didn't feel anything. However, for some other people, I've heard that they did still feel minor contractions and it did still like, I guess, hurt in a sense when the placenta came out. And then after that, Richie had some skin to skin with Jace while I ate. I was so, so, so hungry because you can't eat once you're admitted at the hospital. And so I was starving and I ate this like huge sandwich after and it was so good i've never been like so satisfied in my life to eat just a turkey sandwich so most women do tear 
during labor, obviously there is a human coming out of you. For some people, it's just tearing around the vagina. For some people, it is vagina to rectum, which is not really ideal, but that does happen to some people. And then basically they just stitch you up down there. I still wasn't even paying attention to that, nor did I feel anything. And then shortly after all that, they want the baby to breastfeed and get a latch so the baby learns how to breastfeed as quickly as possible. So that's what we did and Jace latched on pretty quickly. I did have a lot of the nurses come in and take a look to see if I was doing everything correctly, if Jace is latching correctly. Not every baby latches, so I do want to reiterate that point. It's a difficult process I know for moms sometimes when the baby doesn't latch and I just want to say that that is okay. Every baby is different, every mom is different. That doesn't mean that you're a bad mom by any means. I think the best thing that you can do is just as much research as possible before you have the baby. I think there's classes you can also take. And then while you're at the hospital, take advantage of the lactation nurses or lactation consultants. They are the experts. So right after giving birth, I was kind of just feeling amazing. I don't know if it was like from the epidural or what, but I was very happy. Like I was in a state of bliss the entire time that I was at the hospital. Um, I know this doesn't happen for everybody like my friend said that she had the baby and then after that with the hormones Just changing so quickly She was just like at a low and then was super emotional after that So just be aware that your hormones are fluctuating like crazy. Okay, so once you have the baby I'm gonna talk about the next like 24 to 48 hours while you're at the hospital and what exactly is going on with your body during that time Yes, you have to wear adult diapers. Why? Because your uterus is still shedding any extra blood or lining that's still in there. And so a lot of stuff is just coming out of you. So typically the hospital is going to give you some sort of like adult diapers or pads, or you can bring your own super big thick pads that are just gonna absorb everything. Um, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Another option is period proof underwear. I've been seeing these around a lot more lately. These are from Lalova and apparently they can hold up to two Two tampons worth of blood so or postpartum blood um, but this is an option too if you'd rather try this instead of pads but the way I see it is that if you already know that that's gonna happen and you expect it it's really not that big of a deal it's just kind of what you need to do I think the annoying part is like every time you go to the bathroom you have to use this squirt water bottle to basically like wash yourself down there because you can't really wipe because of all the stitches happening um, and that part is painful in terms of how long that will go on for it's typically gonna be like up to six weeks or so some people um, stop bleeding earlier. It really just depends on your body. After the delivery, you start to actually feel the fact that there's pain going on down there and the stitching as well. If you're sitting in a certain way, you can feel it more. There's like pressure down there and it hurts. But through the course of the six weeks, it does start to hurt less and less over time, obviously. If you're on pain medication, that really helps. So I think I was taking like a Tylenol and a stool softener. Um, also hemorrhoids are very typical after you give birth. It's a little bit sore, so it might be painful for you, um, but mostly you're feeling it if you're like trying to use the bathroom. So that's all the bathroom situation. In terms of postpartum care, I use products from Earth Mama to help with that. There's a perineal spray that I used to help kind of speed up recovery and to kind of like cool the area down there as well as sitz baths are very helpful. Um, so I would suggest checking out some of the products from Earth Mama and I'll link them in the description as well. One thing that I did not know was gonna happen and no one warned me about was cramping that you feel after you've already given birth. So every single time I would breastfeed Jace, I was feeling extreme cramping pain which are actually contractions that are continuing to shrink your uterus so in a sense it's a good thing because it's taking your uterus and shrinking it because after you give birth you still look like you're 20 weeks pregnant basically literally for me it felt like I was having contractions all over again so I would be like in pain squirming while I was breastfeeding Jace there was also a cramping tea I was drinking from Earth Mama that did help with that as well and I think after about like two to three weeks that started to subside and it wasn't as painful anymore. So going back to the stitches down there, um, they dissolve after like I think two to three weeks or so. But a lot of people were saying like, were you scared to look down there and see what was going on? I was kind of nervous. Once you take a look down there, it kind of just is like, all right, I pushed the baby out. Like <laughs> someone once described it as a black hole. <laughs> If you are bold enough to venture down there and take a look, you'll see your stitches, they'll eventually fall off. And then, you know, over time, once you're completely healed, usually after about six weeks with a vaginal birth, 
your body is going back to normal. I'm gonna talk about breastfeeding as I've gotten a lot of questions about that. At first, when I was first breastfeeding Jace, I remember that they were very sore because obviously he's sucking on them. They're not used to that. I remember getting a little bit like scabbed up. It did take some time for me to just get used to it and eventually that went away and now I have like no soreness or anything. But I remember the first like month or so that I was home and breastfeeding, they were hurting. And so I was using like nipple cream to soothe them. Also cabbage leaves helped. I would put that on. Um, that was specific for engorgement. At this point, my body is a lot more used to it. And so I'm not really getting engorged and I don't really have any nipple pain or anything like that. So it does get better over time. If you do have excruciating pain in the beginning, that probably means the baby's not latched correctly. And you should definitely talk to like a breastfeeding consultant to figure out what's going on because it shouldn't be that painful. Like yes, it's a little sore in the beginning, but it shouldn't be excruciating pain. Another huge topic is baby blues slash depression. There is a difference between the two. I think it's really important to know that this is something that can happen so that you're prepared for it. 80% of new moms do experience baby blues within the first two to three days of their baby being born. That is completely normal. And they typically feel better within like one to two weeks. A few notes on baby blues. Your mood swings quickly from happy to sad. One minute you're proud of the job you're doing as a new mom. The next minute you're crying. You don't feel like eating or taking care of yourself because you're exhausted you feel irritable, overwhelmed, anxious. A lot of this happens because your hormones are all over the place in addition to the fact that you're also not getting sleep. So all of this just makes you really, really irritable. If it does continue into depression, it's extremely important to get help quickly. And that happens to about 10% of women. When it's depression, you feel hopeless, sad, and worthless or alone all the time and you cry often. You don't feel like you're doing a good job as a new mom. You're not bonding with your baby. You can't eat, sleep, or take care of yourself because you're overwhelming despair. You could have anxiety and panic attacks. If your symptoms don't ease after two weeks, get in touch with your doctor right away. Don't wait for your six week checkup. So at that point, your doctor might prescribe some sort of antidepressants, but I know there's some people out there who don't want medication or are just wondering like, what can I do naturally? to avoid depression. Depression runs in my family, and so that was something I was a little bit nervous about. Personally, I experienced a little bit of baby blues, a little bit of like, whoa, shock to what's happening and all the changes in my life, but it did eventually go away. But here are some helpful tips that are more natural instead of medication. First of all, I'm a huge, huge believer in your thoughts playing a huge role in how you feel and what you do. So I think it's very important to have a positive attitude um, but yes, it can be more difficult than that. So a few things to help. I think it's very important to make sure you're taking any vitamins or herbal supplements that's gonna help you stay healthy, take care of your body as much as you can, make sure you're eating enough food. So much of your energy and nutrition is going to feeding your baby if you're breastfeeding. So it's very important to take care of yourself and make sure you're drinking enough water. Set realistic goals. So if you can't get to all the chores in the house, that's fine. Be realistic with your time and accept help when you can. Also make sure to talk about it with people. So I would say for any partners out there, check in with mom ask her frequently how are you feeling today are you you know are you doing okay Richie was checking in on me because he knows that postpartum depression is a real thing so he wanted to make sure I was okay because I was very up and down I was crying for random things and he was just checking to see like are you okay and don't isolate yourself stay connected especially to moms if you can I talked about that in a recent video making sure you have community around you these are the things that's gonna help you not fall into depression finally I want to talk about kind of that six week period after you have your checkup with your doctor and what happens after that so first of all your body changes so much after you have a baby for every woman that is different but I think it's very important to just be comfortable in your own skin so I talked about kindred bravely and how they're sponsoring today's video and their mission is to make life easier for nursing and pregnant moms they're actually founded by a mom named Deanne who built this clothing line and she's all about comfort and quality they carry so many items from nursing bras to loungewear robes, anything you can think of, nursing pads. So they actually sent me a few items to try out and the very first thing I noticed was the quality of the items and how impressive the fabric was. It's like this silky soft material. The way it like drapes on your body is just so nice. And they have like any type of postpartum nursing bra you would need. So if you need like a sports nursing bra or a nightwear one or a pumping bra or just a bra to look good in regular clothes. And that was one of the things I was really trying to find was a good bra that I can still wear under my regular clothes but also nurse one. I need to. I'm actually wearing their Marvella t-shirt bra right now so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like when you have clothes on. So you can see there's no like spillage or weird things happening. It just looks very smooth, no funny lines. There's also no underwire which is very important for when you're nursing. It's just a very soft comfortable fabric. I also tried the maternity t-shirt. It's the kind of t-shirt that you can actually like there's two layers and you can actually 
just open up the side and there's a little pocket so that you can breastfeed on the go which i have not tried any t-shirt that does this because i didn't really think it was necessary but now that i tried this i see how much i love it because i don't have to put like a nursing cover over my entire body which quite frankly looked very funny to do in public when i was like hiding under a blanket basically trying to breastfeed i also tried some of their sweatpants which i actually have some on right now these are so comfortable all the loungewear i tried from them like sweatpants and robes they're just so comfortable and i would highly recommend Recommend it also have a discount code for you guys of course 20% off use the code green fam 20 for 20% off I hope you guys will try it out and thank you kindred bravely for sponsoring this video so speaking of your new body after you've given birth one of the things my doctor recommended me to is pelvic floor therapy your abs do separate and in order to kind of bring them back together and build those muscles back up you can do this type of therapy as well as strengthening your pelvic muscles so one of the problems that people might have is urinary incontinence which basically means you have trouble holding in your pee if your insurance covers it i highly highly recommend doing it but of course get your clearance first from your doctor after six weeks that you can start doing these types of things also so much fun all your hair starts to fall out a lot of my hair has been falling out it's thinned out tremendously i think mine started after like a month and a half i noticed like okay my hair is slowly falling out now it's to the point where like chunks are coming out in the shower i could probably pull out like a handful well got a few pieces right here there's hair all over the floor in my house that really sucks I don't like it at all now let's talk about sex once you go to your six-week appointment afterwards and the doctor checks on your body and they see the stitching and they let you know if you're healed down there and if you're ready to get the green light to have sex again but I was totally scared because I was like oh my goodness am I gonna be in a lot of pain ah. so I will say the most important thing is make sure you are calm and relaxed once you relax, it's really not that bad. It's very normal for your sex drive to go down because you're very tired from, you know, not sleeping as much in the night, breastfeeding your baby. So there's a lot of changes going on with your body. And so your sex drive might be lower for a while, but eventually that does change and it gets better over time. My best advice for that is don't give up. Do your best to keep the romance in your relationship and communicate with your partner what your needs are and what makes you feel most confident and comfortable so that you can get your sex life back. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed the nitty gritty about labor delivery and postpartum. I hope that if anyone's out there and you're about to have a baby, I helped prepare you in some way on what to expect. Share this video with your partners or spouses so that they know what they're in for. I love you guys. Thank you for watching our videos. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Nicole and Richie. Leave any suggestions in the comments below and make sure to check out Kindred Bravely in the description. We will have a direct link with the discount code. Love you guys and we'll see you in our next video.